the mention of, of Scripture and Scripture study as a preparation for feeling the Spirit introduces our third subject, which is encouraging daily Scripture study. How can we encourage our students to study the Scriptures? Latter-day prophets have stressed the importance of studying the Scriptures each day. Elder Harold B. Lee cautioned, if we're not reading the Scriptures daily, our testimonies are growing thinner, our spirituality isn't increasing in depth. There are few things that a teacher can do that would have a more powerful, long-range effect upon their students' lives than teaching them the importance of studying the scriptures, giving them that experience, letting them uh, taste the fruit of daily scripture study. Uh, in my judgment, that would go beyond any subject that might be taught from the scriptures except the, the fundamentals in the uh, first few articles of faith. <laughs> beyond that, I think the most important thing we could do as teachers of seminary and institute students would be to connect them with the scriptures and the result of daily scripture study. What's been your experience on this? I think students need a challenge. Youth tend to respond to a challenge, especially when their peers are doing it at the same time. We had one year, we were reading 10 minutes a day so that they could get their a grade, and I realized that it just wasn't challenging a lot of my students, and so I pulled some aside and said, how, how about if you try reading the Book of Mormon for half an hour a day for two weeks, and we'll follow up on that. And I just had a wide range of, of personalities that I did that with and videotaped them and then showed that video to my students, and we had a time where we called it, if you want more power, try a half an hour going along with President Benson's quote about the power that comes from scripture study. And we had youth reading the Book of Mormon a half an hour a day and having marvelous personal experiences. They just need a challenge. In the Caribbean area, the area presidency uh, did something similar. It's amazing how many students have taken up the challenge. Those who did not take on the challenge initially, are now asking for a second opportunity. And it's, it's changing lives. Students are in the scriptures every day and reading the Old Testament. Another thing that was interesting is the mission president in Jamaica, President Hendricks, he decided to read along with the students. And so he's been announcing all over the island that I'm reading with you. Uh, and he's been reading, the, well, he's finished. <laughs> he's read the Old Testament with them this year. And that has also made an impact on the students as they've seen priesthood leaders become a part of, you know, the process of encouraging them to, to read every day. And some have taken on the challenge. I think when we have an expectation, uh, they will rise to it. And then when we give them an opportunity to report as well, I, I saw one seminary teacher uh, who was very good at giving his students the opportunity to share what they had learned from the previous day's reading. And they would just share it with their neighbor and take a minute or two and just that opportunity to report and then one person would be able to share it with the whole class. Uh, they gained a sense that this was important to the teacher and uh, they wanted to do it. They wanted to come to class to be able to show what they had learned. It wasn't just what did you read, it what did, what did you learn from the scriptures. You know, I found that's really true. If a teacher's having a good experience studying their scriptures, you don't have to ask them to motivate the students. It just comes out of them. You, you see teachers who are so excited about the scriptures, they walk into class saying, guess what I read last night? What did you read? And it's just so natural because it's a part of who they are. It's not a program. And, and then it really takes on a life and energy. So. I think it's very important when we're encouraging students to read the scriptures that we not do it in such a way that, that we seem to be rewarding them for quantity uh, like the number of pages they've read. We need to 
reward them for quality of reading. That word pondering that's been used in our discussion is an important part of this. It's, it's going to change more lives to read carefully and ponder than it is to, to cover a certain number of pages. In the section in the Gospel and Teaching Learning Handbook that talks about daily study, there's an idea proposed that has really impacted my teaching. It mentions that a teacher can engage a class in a classroom study of the scriptures that mirrors his own personal study. And as a teacher does that, as students are trained in what studying the scriptures actually is, they're then motivated to go home and on their own do what happened in class. My experience in my own seminary class when I was in high school, um, I was an inactive member of the church um, with a very complicated family background. But as I came into seminary, I had a seminary teacher that involved me in studying the scriptures. And it was that involvement that inspired me to go home and for the first time read the Book of Mormon um, to gain my own personal testimony, which influenced me serving a mission, getting married in the temple, my family joining the church, getting, married, uh, getting sealed in the temple. And as I look back on it, the key point for me was learning how to study the scriptures on my own. That, that time spent in a classroom training students uh, can be just so important when you help them see that they can discover a cross-reference for themselves or see a pattern uh, and recognize, you know, oh, Alma said this here and look uh, what uh, Ammon said here and, and uh, those sorts of things. I just think when, you, when those, those sparks go off in their eyes and they, they start to see the training they've received has benefit for them, then they go home and share it or use it uh, with, their, with their family. And when they, they learn how to use the Bible dictionary and the topical guide yeah. and the footnotes, the cross-references, the chapter headings yeah. and, and so on, it's, it's exciting and it's surprising how many people get along in their life without learning how to use the wonderful advance in the scriptures that President Packer refers to so reverently so often. I think also asking questions that help them to see how the scriptures can impact their life is, is, is also critical. Because sometimes the scriptures are up here and their life is, you know, they're, what they're doing at home or the experiences they're having is just not connecting. But asking that question in the classroom and, 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 and as you teach the principle, how does this principle uh, apply to your life? is important for students to see that, well, the scriptures do provide answers to, to questions. And, and a, another thing that, that has been, that I think is really important, is, is to help the students to know that it's not all the time that they're going to have the answers just come immediately. Uh, uh, something that I like to do in my class that my students absolutely, they, they don't like it, they don't like it at all. But I, but I think it's important, they would ask a question and you know, um, somebody would ask a question, and I think it, 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 I could answer it, you know, and, and we could go through this real quick. But I say, you know what, why don't we just all take today and tomorrow and think about this question and come back next, next class and let, let's talk about it. Take two days and, and, and we write it down on the board and we, we have somebody assigned to, to remind us that that's something that we're going to cover. And it, it's been a, a, a very rich experience to see those who do it. Not, they don't always all go home and ponder, but those who come back with insights and, and having thought about it. Uh, usually, I don't have to say anything. Um, I, I would just say, you know, what have you found? And it's an amazing experience to have the, the students share what they've learned and the spirit, what the spirit has, has, has taught them. And that's been powerful. There's one uh, thing that I've learned about scripture study that I wish I'd been taught when I was of an age to be attending seminary or institute, and that is that it is a great mistake to try to read the scriptures like you read a magazine or a newspaper. And 
what I, what I refer to is the fact that I pick up a newspaper and I just read it, or I pick up a magazine or a textbook and I just read it. But when I pick up the scriptures, I'm picking up the word of God written by prophets under the influence of the spirit of the Lord. That should never be read without praying over it first. When I go to... Uh, the table to eat. I don't take physical nourishment without asking the Lord to bless that food to nourish and strengthen my body. Similarly, I think when we study the scriptures, we should bow our head and pray. Often it would be silently because of the surroundings, but we would pray that the Lord would bless us, that we'd be able to understand what we're reading and that the act of reading the scriptures would summon the Spirit of the Lord to guide us on things other than simply the meaning of what we're reading. In this way, the scripture can be a Urim and Thummim to help us receive revelation, but it begins with prayer. It doesn't begin with reading like a newspaper or a magazine.